Of Hattleburg. We'll stay behind and uh, deep, well, the, uh, deflate the raft and uh, deflate the, uh, or rather, discard the uh, chemical instruments, and the whole thing will sink into the ocean. And that'll be the end of that raft and the end of the decontaminants. Once the astronauts are back in the helicopter and the big man has completed his decontamination proceedings, he removes his garment, the one designed to keep bugs from getting in. We'll leave it on the raft. We'll leave all the chemical materials. He will then sink the raft with all of its uh, implements and will swim to the second raft that is at the end of this 100-foot tether. And then that's how they will uh, get, back, get back to their ship. The crew on the uh, helicopter that is standing by is piloted by Don S. Jones of Madison, Wisconsin. Lieutenant J.G. Bruce Johnson of Bremerton, Washington is the co-pilot. And the, and the two crewmen standing at the open uh, door that, uh, and operating the winches and hoist, these crewmen are Chief Petty Officer Norval Wood of Carmi, Illinois and Chief Petty Officer Stanley Rob Nett of Portales, New Mexico. First astronaut climbing into the net. There he goes. First astronaut on his way to the helicopter. We don't know which one it is. We just don't know yet which one it is. He's suspended from the helicopter, hovering over the raft, 40 feet above. The helicopter's 40 feet above. There are two men inside the helicopter operating the winch and to help the astronaut. Petty Officer Norval Wood and Chief Petty Officer Stanley Rob Nett. The first astronaut now inside the helicopter. We don't know which one. Forty feet separate the helicopter and the spacecraft, the surface of the water. Number two astronaut now going up. But again, it is not possible to identify the astronauts uh, in the order in which they are going into the spacecraft, or into the uh, helicopter. Lieutenant Clancy Hadelberg remains in the raft. Third and final astronaut now in midair on the 40-foot lift into the helicopter. He's just suspended in midair there, sitting there uh, in pendulum fashion. Now it's uh, the hoist is operating again. Now he's almost to the doorway. And the third astronaut is inside the helicopter. All three now can return to the Hornet. All three of them wearing their special biological garments. The third astronaut is now in the helicopter. The door is closed. The helicopter is uh, going to come back to the ship now. So the astronauts have uh, been to the moon and back, and they've come through the last dangerous part of the flight, which was the re-entry. And uh, it's all over now, but going into quarantine. You know, I think we ought to mention right here, Don, uh, uh, Ron rather, that uh, we are about 906 statute miles southwest of Hawaii, moving up uh, a couple of hundred miles along the track from the original splashdown point, which means that we're a good deal closer to Pearl Harbor than we would be otherwise. In fact, we're about 10 hours ahead of, uh, ahead of the point where we would be at this time if we adhered to the original schedule. And there had been some talk during the night here on the Hornet, as you know, Ron, uh, that perhaps we might make Pearl Harbor by Friday night instead of Saturday morning. But the last I heard from NASA officials was that the original schedule would be followed and the captain plans to uh, have the carrier tied up 
at Perth Bravo in Pearl Harbor at 9 o'clock Saturday morning. All three astronauts now on board helicopter number 66. The helicopter is loitering out there a bit, as uh, Commander Jones said it would. This is to give the two crew members in the back a chance to come up forward and take off their uh, isolation garments and leaving in the back of the helicopter only Dr. Carpentier and the two astronauts. This will probably be the photo chopper coming in. They're generally the first to come in. circle and they'll make a formation and swim one chopper that still has Crock on the board will come up tight on Commander Jones's wing just as a precaution. And swim two, uh, Pete, will just stay out there babysitting as they say with the uh, swimmers who dropped into the water alongside the command module who helped in the recovery of the astronauts. They will stay with the uh, command module until it is alongside the uh, the starboard side of the carrier and it's about to be brought up onto the number three elevator. Then they will climb aboard the car carrier in cargo nets. Renewed signs down here on the hangar deck of the presidential presence. Secret Service men are reappearing on the hangar deck. Everyone has a green deck. Beginning to rain uh, up here. The president has a uh, overhang on that uh, bridge, so he's not getting wet. We believe the president may have moved off the bridge, possibly on his way down. It's only a very short trip. Oh, there he is. He's moved aft, and he's back to the Admiral's Bridge, uh, just outside uh, Flag Flood. No baseball caps this time and no handshakes. These astronauts headed for
Keith, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, almost as soon as the helicopter landed, uh, a chief ran out and stuck a third symbol of a spacecraft on the nose. Oh, we got three big calls now. Yeah. And also they radioed from the helicopter to the bridge. Now it's Hornet plus three. That's the motto of this trip, and you see buttons all over the ship. Right. In other words, all the men who went out with the Hornet are coming back plus three more, the three astronauts. Old number 66 has got uh, follow, decal for follow 8, follow 10, now follow 11. I know the helicopter can make that statement. That was uh, Chief Bradley, the line chief of Helicopter Squadron 4, who ran out and put that other spacecraft symbol on and also a sign saying Hornet plus 3. You can't see in the back there, it's just too dark. Through that window. 